Uh, first, to start off saying you know, a lot of appreciation and thanks to our players. I um, thought we had a tremendous competitive camp. Um, I think certainly there was more than um, 53 guys that deserve to make this roster, but we got rules that we got to follow. So um, tough couple days. A lot of thanks to our scouts, our personnel staff, and certainly our coaches. But with that, I'll take questions. Brian, you have youth all over the roster. Obviously, a lot of draft picks the past two years, but three undrafted rookies on this roster as well. How, how intentional was that going in with a new starting quarterback, and what does that say for 2023? Yeah, I don't think it was intentional to be young. I think our intention was to be, you know, athletic, fast, and have a really competitive camp so that the, you know, the best guys rose to the top. And I think that's what we accomplished. But it wasn't just to be young. Yeah. I was told that Tariq Carpenter was released. Is there another move corresponding? With that? Yeah, we'll have to do that here by three o'clock. So we'll we'll get to that. We're working through some of those things. Brian, what went into the decision to keep? three running backs. I know you kept two last year, and then we heard from yeah. you and Matt saying, you know, obviously special teams and pass protection is vital in that role. What did mm -hmm. you like about what Emmanuel brings in those two areas? Yeah, certainly I think he, he did some things as a runner that we kind of saw in college, but uh, you never know how quickly those guys are going to be able to show that in the National Football League. But uh, I think he took advantage of his opportunities. Uh, he was significantly probably early on, you know, far away from the special teams and some of the other, you know, nuances of playing running back. But he really progressed through the last few weeks. And um, he, he showed some special things in, in his opportunities. And uh, again, he's a 225 pound back. Um, I really like that room. So, um, but um, he, uh, he certainly earned it. That, um, that stunt pickup that he had the other day, was that much of a factor in this? Yeah, I mean, everything's a factor, right? I mean, especially when you, know, you feel you got a number of players that are deserving. But um, his growth, and I think where his upside is, was certainly something that was um, part of the decision. Yeah, Tavares, unfortunately, he had a couple injuries there that was going to make it tough. Um, didn't get out there to be able to show as much as um, we think he has. Um, but um, I think that came down to that, just kind of availability. Is Owens good enough in coverage, do you think, to be a guy who can play if he needs to? Oh, absolutely, yeah. What, what, what were the deciding, deciding factors at, at Hunter? What, uh, what, what broke that down for you? Yeah, tough decision. But obviously, Daniel, I mean, he just he came in and earned it. You know, I think both him and Pat had great, great camps. Pat's a true pro and has a lot of experience and uh, obviously handled the things the right way. And I think Daniel learned a lot from him in his time here. But um, yeah, you know, obviously when you bring in a guy like Daniel who hasn't had a lot of experience, you don't know what you're getting. And um, I think just every every step along the way, he um, he had a nice camp and, and earned the job. When you're going through that decision, how much should you factor in the possibility that we might be going with a kicker and a punter without any experience? Yeah, not a lot. We're just, I mean, I think again, we had a, a really competitive camp and we were, we were just looking for the guys who performed the best and, and at the end of the day that's that's kind of how it shook out what do you uh, what do you like so much about Tenuta? he's big first of all you know uh, he's really smart he's tough um, I think we think he's got a pretty good upside to him you know so um, uh, you guys know I've talked to you guys about this before um, especially once you get into the season it's hard to find big guys that can play and we think he's a big guy who can play. So we'd like to continue to develop him. You know, you're anyway tackle heavy with 11? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're a little deeper than we, where we, you know, we've been in the past. And um, so, you know, offensive line now we're at 11. We won't be at 11, you know, for very long. But uh, um, we have a good group there, a um, bunch of guys who can play. Um, we've intentionally kind of drafted some guys. And they've, they've, a lot of those guys have developed. So we're excited about that group. Um, Certainly took a lot of con you know calls and conversations through the uh, last couple of weeks on those guys, but um, you can't have enough. You can't have enough of them. Brian, what did you think of the camp that Malik put together, and even to be in a position to be running with Jordan, you know, yeah. at the end of it to, to be with the one? Yeah, another example of a guy who you know just took advantage of every opp opportunity he had. You know, we've talked about this before in this room, and we certainly talk about it um, all the time about. You can't control the opportunities you're going to get, but you can control what you do with them, and that usually leads to more opportunities. And I think as Malik, you know, just you know, practice after practice, preseason game, just every step of the way, he was he was making the most of his opportunities. You know, with Brian, why is it that why is it that undrafted rookies just seem to make your team year after year after year? Yeah, I don't know if we're unique in that. You know, I don't. I'd be honest with you, I don't know if we've done a whole lot of. Um, you know, metrics on that. Although when we get to UDFA recruiting, we certainly use that quite a bit. Um, but, um, you know, I think, first of all, the one thing that I do appreciate, uh, you know, working for the Green Bay Packers is that 
you know, it's really about the, you're going to get a real opportunity. You know, you're going to have an opportunity just because someone was drafted ahead of you uh, or may have been here for the previous years doesn't mean you're not going to get an opportunity to make the squad. Um, you know, we don't have a traditional owner um, that may have something to do with it as well. So um, we maybe we're able to make those decisions a little easier. Um, but I do think that as we've gone into the camps that I've been a part of here for the most part, it's been an open competition and, um, you know, let the guys who perform the best and earn it. I know it happens all the time. We've seen undrafted rookies every year come in and make the 53, but did Malik surprise you? Because I don't know if we've seen a guy come in and run with the starting offense right away. I wouldn't say he surprised me. I, you know, I think whenever a guy continually takes, you know, makes the most of his opportunities, it's, um, you know, it's hard. It's hard in the National Football League to do that, keep your body right, keep your mind right, so that you can do that each and every time. But, um, you know, Malik's a guy that should have been drafted. You know, he wasn't for some other reasons. And um, but I think the talent that he had was was that was never a factor. We knew he had that in him. Um, and then just being able to put it, you know, um, to just on display each and every day was um, that wasn't necessarily surprising, but it was impressive. What excites you the most about the rookies on the D line and the depth you have at that position? Yeah, I, mean, I think again, um, when you bring young players, new players into your building. Um, you've scouted them, you've spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and then when they show up um, and just kind of put in the work that they've done each and every day and what you thought of them prior is what they're showing each and every day, um, it just makes you feel good. And I think, um, again, I think this particular group in camp had more opportunities maybe than some did in the past. And uh, a lot of these guys have taken advantage of that. Hey, Goody, your uh, first year back here was 98, right? Uh, yeah, so then, yeah, so actually the 99 season. Yeah, so I got back in the basically December 98. I was in Kansas City in 98. Um, I feel like I've learned what you will and won't answer over the last six years. In 98, Ron traded Mike Flanagan to the Panthers, right. and then he flunked his physical mm -hmm. and he came back here, and he ends up being a two-time Pro Bowl player. Uh, I know it's business, not personal, yep. but if you have a player that maybe was involved in some conversations, what do you do next? when that guy's still on your team in general. How do you handle that? How do you handle a guy that maybe now thinks you didn't really want him? Oh, um, I don't know if I, I'm following you exactly. Um, you know, Mike Flanagan thing that what I can remember, I always thought was really impressive that you know, he had that really bad ankle injury. And I do remember that when Ron when I went through that. But um, the one thing I took away from that particular situation was the patience he showed because he thought he could play. You know, and he gave him the time, and, and, and um, even though he, I mean, he wasn't playing for a while there, and um, he, nobody really knew if he was ever going to play, but he had the patience because he thought the talent was there, and if we could get him healthy, that he could be a good player. Then obviously, he really, really was. So, um, but um, I don't think, you know, I think the whole idea of not wanting a player, I don't know if that's really ever the case. Is it's, I mean, you got to make the best decisions for your football team, and um, sometimes you, when you go through those. Thing. It's not that you don't want players. It's just that you know you can only have so many. You know, I mean, believe me. I mean, I'm like Ted. I mean, if we could have 115, we'd have 115. Got enough coaches to coach them. I know that. So you know, we'd, you know, it'd be good to it'd be good to have more. But um, you know, that's and that's the hardest part about this these these days is that you know people, there's a lot of people that have invested a lot of time in these guys. We got to let go, and um, we, they care about them, and um, and you and you see the development. You see that there's more out there for them, and you just you know. By rules, you can't. You don't have the time to do it. But do you have to keep players to cut players when you have your eyes on waiver claims and things like that? I mean, that discussion. This guy, once the practice squad is set, might have a better chance of returning. Those kinds of things. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Just. I mean, you get down to your initial fifty-three, but right. you have your eyes on waiver claims too. So are you sure. keeping guys that you're going to have to release when a claim is made? Oh sure. Yeah, I think. You know, that's, and that's just the nature of the National Football League. I think, you know, the one thing, you know, we try to tell these guys is that you're not only competing with the guys that are here, but you're competing with everybody in the National Football League because I have an entire staff that's all they do all day is watch, you know, every preseason game, every snap, and uh, we're comparing our guys versus their guys, and um, that's what we owe to this, this organization, right, is to try to put the best team we can out there. So, um, again, it's a very tough part of the business, a very tough time, but um, – that's that's you have to always as a player. I think you always have to keep that in the back of your mind. Is that I'm not just competing with pe people who are here, but um, you know all 32 teams. Brian, since Jason Pitelli was trying to be delicate about it, I'll just be blunt. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Taylor, uh, what was your interest level there, and, and how much can that continue to, to, to be discussed? Well, let's get the checklist out. First of all, I can't talk about 
players on other teams. Um, we try to be in every conversation. Um, so, um, you know, um, anytime we have good players available to us, we'd like to make the Green Bay Packers better. And uh, we'll look at those opportunities. Um, so that's good. about what I got to say about that. So, so does your answer apply to them if AJ thinks he was part of those conversations that you have to tell him that he's still part of this team and an important part of it? AJ is part of this team and he was going to be regardless. So I don't, I don't, you know, so I don't, yeah, I mean, that's, um, again, like there's, there's a lot of conversations we are used at times for very leveraged situations at times as well. Um, but, you know, we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing if we're not investigating these things, at least listening to things. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's kind of one of the, I think it's the nature of the world now. It's just, um, there's all kinds of things out there with some are true, some aren't. Along those lines, Brian, does, it, does it piss you off though that your name came out, whether it's true or not, if the perception now is maybe among the guys, AJ Dillon, your locker room, that they're trying to move on to me, they're trying to upgrade. Does it make you mad that I don't something know why that Yeah, but I don't know why that perception. I don't know why that perception would be there. I mean, that's just, I think these people pulling things out, out of right. air, you know, so. Which I guess my point, though, that, that you're being thrown out there by potentially a colleague. I mean, like, you would never do, you would never stay up, sit up there and say that. Mm -hmm. But now you guys get, you know, I don't want to say thrown on the bus, that's the wrong word for it, but you guys yeah. get thrown out there. Is it possible to train? Yeah, I don't, you know, again, like, yeah, you know, again, I think there's, you know, Again, I don't, I don't know how these things get out there. I don't particularly care. You know, you guys know how we do business around here. That's just not, that's not how we do them. So, and I don't really want to react to them. I mean, we have conversation about players throughout the National Football League, um, players on our team with other teams all the time. People ask about our guys all the time. You know, I mean, that's just part of it. So, um, I can't be running to our worry about what our you know, players think every time somebody calls and asks us because it might get out in the media. I'm not really too concerned with that. You know. Um, we have a great running back room. Really excited about it. And I think they're a strength of our football team. So, um, you know, like, but they, again, you know, we have a lot of conversations. You know, if it, people get, you know, perceive that it's one thing or another, I can't control that. With that said about the great running back room, take Jonathan Taylor aside. There's youth again all over this roster. Mm -hmm. Aaron Jones is, is not among that. How do you see that room playing out long term? Yeah, I mean, Aaron's, Aaron's the heart and soul of this team to a certain extent. I mean, he's such a, a, a big part of what we do, not not only on the field offensively, um, but just as a leader as well. So, um, again, you know, we're excited about what this group can do. Um, again, there's some young faces on offense, but um, we're expecting guys like Aaron and AJ kind of being the leaders in there to carry it. You know, so we're excited about that. Brian, how do you see the running back position today? You guys are obviously a league wider, haven't been a lot of huge multi year contracts. I don't know if there's any contracts, but I think it's, it's really important. Those guys touch the ball a lot. You know, I think as, um, you know, in the league, I think in general, it's just, you know, the more they can do in the passing game makes them more valuable. You know, I think that's a big part of that, you know, how they catch the ball, how they're used. Um, can they pass block and they stay on the field in those situations? I think it's really important and, and increases their value. But, um, yeah, we've always viewed that position as very valuable. So, you know, markets are markets, but we, we view it as a very valuable position. Brian, were you pretty hesitant to bring in Brenton Cox and then maybe why is it working out? Yeah. I think there's a lot of reasons. First of all, obviously, we were very thorough when we go through those things uh, in college, and our college scouts do such a great job of, of getting to know these guys and kind of helping me decide whether we want to give those opportunities um, um, to those guys coming out of college that might have stubbed their toe once or twice. Um, and I give a lot of credit to Matt and his staff for when they get here, um, you know, just kind of giving these guys a clean slate and allowing what they do here um, to really, you know, chart their course, so to speak. I also believe we have a ton of resources here uh, through the building that, um, that people that do a really good job of taking the information we get on these players out of college and then applying it to them when they get here so they, they do have the best chance to succeed. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of our staff. You know, there's so many, you know, whether it's our guys in the medical staff, uh, Gray and his group in, in player programs, Dr. Carr. Um, we just do a lot of things that I think give our guys the best chance to succeed um, to overcome whatever they got to overcome. What do you see from the player, you know, to make Yeah, he's a little bit like some yeah, some of the like some of these other guys. I think it's just the way they've attacked it daily and, and been able to make plays day in and day out, um, come ready to work. And um, you know, I think obviously all these young players, there's eyes on them all the time. Not only when they're on the field and practice field and in the preseason games, but how they are in the building, how they're treating people, 
are they true pros? Are they establishing routines to, you know, to allow them to grow and get better? Um, so we have eyes on them all the time, and, and that's part of the evaluation too, because that if they do those things, it allows them to grow. Brett, last week, uh, Jair had a pretty good bit. Talk about Jordan, just how much he, talking he did to him throughout camp and how kind of unshakable he was in that. I'm curious in the pre-draft process, could you sense that with Jordan coming out, and just how, and how important is that, that sort of yeah. ability not to get rattled in that position? Yeah, I mean, he's, he always has come across as kind of a cool customer. You know, he's kind of, um, you know, um, again, this is a whole different, you know, ball game when you get to the National Football League. And uh, what we're about to go into in the next 17 games is different than what he's experienced so far as well. So, um, but I think along the way, whether it was in college and in, and in his time here, um, through all the ups and downs that he's had, he's just, he's maintained a very steady, even killed approach. Um, he's, you know, and I think that helps him, you know, his routine helps him get through those things. And um, again, I hope that, that hopefully that will serve him well as we get into this season. Scooby, uh, you had a good answer a couple weeks ago about how rare win championships, mm -hmm. not win a, some games. And you have to give guys room to grow to get better. So now that we kind of have your initial roster and we see how young it is, at, especially on offense, I'm wondering what's realistic to expect from this team, you've built Super Bowl caliber teams before. They don't usually have an average age under 25. I'm wondering, what are your realistic expectations? Because obviously you want to win as many games as you can, but you also need to be realistic with the level of youth you have. Yeah, I don't, you know, sometimes youth can be a benefit, you know? I mean, you know, I mean, um, it's a young man's game and you need the legs, you need the speed. Um, certainly there's an experience factor these guys are gonna have to go through. So for me, the expectation is to go out and try to win every game that we play. You're, going to, you're not going to win them all. I mean, in my lifetime, nobody has, right? So, um, but at the same time, you got to learn and grow from every situation, whether we win or we lose the ups and downs. You have to learn and grow from that and continue to get better. Um, you know, the teams that have a chance to win a championship are the teams that are getting better each week and, and really kind of towards that end of the season and are at their best, you know? Um, so that's what I expect. That's my expectations. And hopefully that will lead us to, to accomplish the goals that we want to accomplish. But. Um, yeah, I know that there's been a lot of talk about the youth and, and, and all that, but it's like that's no excuse. I mean, I mean these guys, these guys were brought in for us to be better, better than we were last year, and um, they were all brought here for a reason. So now they got to come together as a team and they got to do that, and that takes that takes a lot of time and effort. And certainly, guys who have more experience are we're more used to that, um, but the expectations don't change. Brian, you said you were optimistic about Devondre being ready for Week One. Are you? on the same level of optimism about Rashawn being ready for week one? Yeah, I feel good about both those guys. I mean, we got a, we got some time here, but um, again, um, you know, they've both looked uh, very good uh, for the stages that they're at, um, but we'll see. I don't think we're, I mean, what injury report comes out next week, is that right? First one, so we'll kind of see where that's at. What do you like about Ben Sims? You know, Ben's a guy we, you know, we brought in here for a 30 visit, um, and a guy we, we got to get through the physical and all that kind of stuff when he gets here. But another big, uh, big athlete who can run um, very fast. I think uh, what he was able to do in the last three weeks uh, up in Minnesota was um, he really improved his game in some areas that uh, gave us a lot of confidence to put that claim in. You were pretty clear that you wanted to see Jordan play quite a bit this preseason, mm -hmm. and you got to. What, what did you learn about Jordan uh, just by seeing him work in the past 30 days, the past month, or maybe what was reinforced? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know if I learned a whole lot other than I think, you know, it, it was just good to, um, you know, see him being out there and commanding it. You know, I think, and, and, and again, I mean, there's there's things that not, maybe not everybody sees, but little mistakes that, you know, I think he's going to really grow from, you know, just, and then there are things that maybe didn't affect the play. Um, and then there's the successes that he had to the same thing, you know, that gives, gives him confidence to, to move forward. So I think it was just really, really, really good. I mean, you, you know, again, when you put those guys out there, sometimes you're a little bit, you know, we haven't done that a lot around here, but I think it was such an important thing to get out of it clean uh, where he played really well. I think that was um, a really benefit to our offense. So I'm, I'm excited about it, but I don't know if I've really learned a ton. I just think it was really good for him and our offense. Brian, over the years through this month of camp and preseason, how much have you really felt you knew about your team going into the season, and how often have you then been surprised by the product on the field? Do you think that's at all different with the younger team, with the team playing more in the preseason games? Yeah, that? that's a good question. I, I think, you know, every year is a bit of a surprise, and I don't think you ever really know until you get out there, you know. And, um, you know, there's there's years I thought we were going to be really good, and it didn't happen kind of the way it was. And there's you look back and you always evaluate why. and. 
Um, there was years that I wasn't so sure, and, and yeah, we were much better than we expected. So I try not to put too many um, ceilings or floors on any of that kind of stuff. Um, I do think that, um, you know, there's going to be um, times this year where, like, you know, it's just it, because there were so many knowns before um, that we have an opportunity um, to grow and grow fast, and that's exciting. Yeah, I think he just, again, um, I think he came in a little bit more polished than I think any of us expected. And that's, you know, obviously that's um, a nice surprise. But, um, again, um, competed every day, um, fought through the little things that young players have to fight through, you know, and um, just made play after play. I think um, and really kind of, you know, fit in with, with Jordan and the offense um, really fast. And that's hard to do. So that, that, was, that, was, that was nice to see. Day one to now, how much did your comfort level change in having a rookie as your backup quarterback back now, first year quarterback? Do you feel a lot different now than maybe the day at the start of camp? Yeah, no, I think uh, sh certainly Sean um, did enough good things where we feel very confident in that, where uh, I think any young player, particularly at the position of quarterback, um, again, you have to earn that, and he did a nice job doing that. And um, um, as we go, obviously go along, we always have the ready list and emergency list um, for in case those things don't happen. Um, but he did a nice job um, earning that job, and um, I think again um, allows us to feel pretty confident going into the season. When you started this as a GM, you, you didn't have a 16-player practice squad, mm -hmm. and you didn't have the flexibility that you have with it now. How has your philosophy in terms of the types of players you want on it changed, and how does it affect what you're able to do from a roster perspective? Of yeah. maybe you keep a guy there that then you can, you know, utilize yeah. on an actual. No, that's a, great, that's a great question. I think you know one of the few things um, that was good about the COVID time, you know, that came out of that was part of that. I think, you know, we do really look at it more and more. Um, and for that, for us, for this year, it's a seventy-man roster with Kenneth. So you know, like, um, I think when you're looking, there used to be kind of a, a very hard um, set of numbers that you had to have at each position um, on the fifty-three, and I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore because. With the ability to, to have a 16 or 17 man for us practice squad and the ability to elevate these guys to play on game day, um, it really is a nice, flexible way for us to, 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 um, to be able to do what's best for our roster. And I think, uh, I hope it never goes away because I think hey, we're able to develop more players, but we're also able to have veteran players in the practice squad that maybe are more ready to play uh, in a pinch and then um, also not have to necessarily just be kind of stuck to a certain number of players at each position. So it's been really nice. Two more, please. Brian, when we heard from you after the draft, you made it pretty clear your expectations for the defense were, mm -hmm. were pretty high. And, and most of the youth on this team is on the offensive side. How do you feel about, about what you've seen from the defense and, and how do you feel about this group going into the season? Yeah, good. You know, for the most part, you know, we stayed you know, mostly healthy. I mean, I certainly Dre's was a little bit of a setback, but um, he's a pro. so. Um, but no, I think um, you know those guys have gelled through throughout. I think um, certainly the the depth we have in the front is a little bit you know deeper than we've had in the past. You know, and really excited about some of the young pass rushers. You know, and our ability to affect the quarterback. Again, we got we have to go out there and do it as a unit. But um, yeah, no, I feel good about them. And again, that expectations are high. So um, I think they know that, and I don't think they're afraid of it. Going back to to Jordan, with everything you did just see, how, how much of it is you, you just don't know until you, you, week one comes and they're game planning, scheming against him and how he's going to handle that? I mean, is, is there, are there things that you can glean and, and kind of have a feel for what he is going into the season, or is that just wait and see? Yeah, I think there's there's certain things you you know you see and you see him grow and you say, okay, now he handles this much differently than maybe he did a year ago, two years ago. Um, but yeah, you know, the quarterback position, I you know, I would argue is one of the hardest, if not the hardest, position to play in all of team sports. And, um, you know, I've only been through it the one time and seen it up close when we went from Brett to, to Aaron. But um, even when they're able to go out there and perform at a high level, to be able to perform at a high level and then to learn how to win, is that there's, there's, there's time that that takes. I mean, I think, you know, when Aaron first went into his first two years, I mean, I think midway through that second year, we were, I think was, we were like 10 and 14 or something like that. So. It just takes a little bit of time, um, but at the same time, like um, he's done some things over the past year and a half that I think allows us that no matter what happens within a game, that he's going to be able to handle it and, and move forward, which is, I think is a, is a, is a big thing, and uh, um, we're excited about it. Um, but you know, until they get into the until you get into the regular season, it's, it's that's a whole different ball game. So, 
I can sneak on one, one real quick is Magoo back as your third quarterback practice squad guy. Yeah, we're still going through all the uh, expect him to be. We're, we're still going through all the practice squad stuff. We're not officially done with that. I don't believe so. It should be close.